direct from Las Vegas, it's the Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show with Chef Michael. Sit back, relax, and we're going to entertain you with a little bit of staying fit and fabulous forever, a little bit of cooking with Chef Michael, and, of course, some wonderful interviews and entertainment. See you in a minute. We're here at Hacienda Del Rey, and I'm here with Michael Delano, who you might most recognize from General Hospital or CSI, or most recently, the Ocean's Eleven. Yep. And uh, Michael, what are you doing here at Hacienda Del Rey with us tonight? Well, I know Sandy, you have a special event. I'm singing. <laughs> You're singing. Uh, yes, I started uh, back into music about uh, two and a half years ago. I was a singer years ago, back in the 60s and 70s, with a uh, uh, R&B band and a blues band and I got back into it about two and a half years ago and uh, doing standards and having a good time. So is this like because this was the love of your life that you decided you wanted to start singing again? Oh, I've wanted to be an entertainer since I was old enough to know that what they did up there you could get paid for. <laughs> And uh, you really get paid for this? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah you, you mean I'm not getting paid? I know. I, I know the times have changed a lot. So tell us a little bit about your acting career and what are some of the most uh, fun experiences that you had? Mm, well, gee. Let's see. I go back the first year in the business in 1971. I managed to get a film that went to Spain for nine weeks. I had two national commercials a pilot and a series and I thought this is not a bad business That's a lot I could do year. all right in this and then it went up and down through the 70s and 80s and then started to taper off in the 90s and then I moved here to to Vegas and actually caught a lot of work once I got here mm -hmm. I caught the a couple of CSI's uh, Ocean's 11 and 12 uh, Chicago Hope uh, let me see what else uh, Royal Pains I just did one of those uh, fatherhood. What was the other one I did? Uh, where they blew me up and set me on fire. Uh, <laughs> another stakeout with uh, Rosa. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, God, my mind is a blank right here. You know, it's amazing though that you've done so much in Las Vegas because you know there was a period of time where they said, well, there wasn't a lot going on here with the film industry. Well, I was lucky because there was a casting guy here mm -hmm. named Ray Favaro, who's okay. no longer uh, in the business, but he was a friend of mine and brought me in on a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to audition and get the jobs. Right. Uh, so now, when you started out when you were a kid, yeah, why did you go into acting? Uh, well, like I said, when I first realized that what they did on the screen you could make a living at, and it's everybody's, it's every guy's fantasy. You play cowboys and Indians, you shoot the gun, the guy falls off the horse. I mean, it's, it's, it's play acting and it's real and they pay you good money for it. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. However, I've got a lot of other trades. <laughs> the secret to this business is never quit your day job always have another way to survive and you can handle the rejection of acting and now it comes have, with a lot of nose and now you have singing also yeah is absolutely a blessing in life. Except when things go wrong. That's why you need somebody good to come in to do the repair, to uh, put extensions, to do whatever needs to be done from plumbing to painting, I mean flooring. The one guy that I know that will really come through for you, his name is Alex Yanko. That's Everyday Home Improvement. Hey, guess what? I think something's leaking. I better call him. I'm here with Melanie Jackson, otherwise known as Miss Melody. Yes. Hi, Miss Melody. How are you? How are you, Sandy? It's great to see you again. I know, I know. I love seeing you sing the other night. And I love you as well. And I know we're going to get an opportunity again tonight. So tell me a little bit about your new album, Then and Now. Then and Now is my first project. I've written, 
I co-produced, and I sang all the songs, even the backup vocals. And that is my first project um, outside of going, doing bands and live performances, so I wanted to try something. Now, did you get backers to fund you on this, or did you fund it yourself? It was funded by myself and my ex. I had a, um, a very person, a person that was really interested in my work, and he met me actually performing karaoke. Oh. So he said, if uh, you can sing like that, I want to take you to the studio. <laughs> but you not only sing, you also have been in some reality shows. Yes, I have. I was a part of the American Inventor, that's okay. by Simon Cowell. Uh, it was one of his second ventures from American Idol. Okay. Um, I was on the first season. Um, they did a talk, you know, talked to me about my ex. He had an invention, and so I ended up doing a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. um, the industry was a story about the life of an artist from every day, what we do when we get up, how we had to do for shows, uh, fo uh, photographs, everything. And then also you've done some summer rep. A repertory theater. That was a play. Uh -huh. That was my very first play in San Diego, California. I was the lead songwriter and a music director for my first run. Again, writing. Writing. Writing, writing, writing. Yes. And singing and performing. Yes. <laughs> W-I-M-A. What does that mean, Sandy? Women and men in music and arts. WEMA. Empowering artists of all ages through education, mentoring, and scholarships. What a great feeling to give these scholarships to these people that need it. I know, and you can go to WIMAFoundation.org, become a member, or make a donation. Hi, this is Sandy Castell with Sandy Castell and Friends, and I'm here with a special guest here. It's Marcia Black, and she is going to be on a new TV show down in Florida. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it, Marcia? Well, great. Well, actually, thank you very much, Sandy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm from Mexico City, and I'm going to have this show they call The Housewives from Boca Raton, Latino you know, Latinos flavor. We have Miami, we have Orange County, but this is gonna be Boca Raton, only Latino women, how they live, how they spend the money. I'm supposed to be the, the bad girl. I am not that bad, okay? I'm good, but I, you know, I, you know how it is. But I'm But so you're so excited. shy. Oh, no, no, I'm not shy at all. No, well, no, yes, I'm very shy. I'm Capricorn, December 31st, New Year's, working that turn. <laughs> So what are you doing here at Fashion Week Las Vegas? Well, Vegas is a place that you're supposed to come use for three days and you say that's it, right? But guess what? It's 20 days and I'm still here. <laughs> and I love it. I just love it. I keep losing money. Who cares? But anyway, the people is great. So great that I I do own a business in Boca Raton and definitely I'm moving to Vegas in eight months and it's so incredible the people the energy i mean you wake up in the morning and you feel like it's incredible so i think my business is going to do great my show is going to do incredible the people that i meet every day they have such an incredible energy boca raton is a little bit more like, oh my god but here is like very friendly, so. Well, well, how, does, how does that work when you're doing the show there, though, and then you're gonna move here after the show? Well, no, I'm gonna back and forth, back and oh, forth. You know, okay. take a plane six hours, come back. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is. You film, mm -hmm. and you come back, and then you come back and forth. And I take care of my business and relax a little bit, which I don't think I can relax. <laughs> So, I don't think I'm gonna relax. so tell us a little bit about your business. Your business it's, it's my shoes, okay? Time. I know, like, I know. See, this, see my shoes is, is not like a. I don't even have a piña colada yet, okay? So anyway, tell me. Your, your jewelry that you make? Yeah, well, I design jewelry, like all the beautiful replicas, cubic zirconia, sterling silver, everything in fashion. So every woman you know will love jewelry, right? Yes? Of course we love jewelry. And shoes and... Can everything. never have enough. Exactly. So my jewelry is very in fashion, has wives. You have to see my jewelry. You can... I can put you up. I might like it. Oh, you're going <laughs> to love it. You, trust me, you're going to love it. So I designed jewelry, and it's very unusual, very super, super, very super chic, very nice, very in fashion. You have to see it. You have to come to my new boutique. 
Okay. Well, so um, we're going to be watching for the show, and which which station is it going to be on? Well, that I cannot tell you yet. It's a secret. A secret. Okay. <laughs> hey, going to be. I will give you all the information later. Okay. And but so I have to keep you posted on that. Exactly, and we're going to go commercial in one hour. So <laughs> we're going to be talking for for a while. <laughs> no, you see. Well, um, thank you, Marcia, for being on the show. It's much. so good to meet you and thank to have you on the show. And I'll be looking forward to seeing more about your jewelry. Absolutely. Because it's very beautiful. Thank, thank you. You're so pretty. Can I give you a kiss? Yes, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be in. Thank you so much again, okay? Well, thank, thank you for being on Sandy Castell and Friends. She's been thrilling audiences all around the world. Now you're going to be thrilled at the latest album from singer-songwriter Sandy Castell. Get your copy now of Indiana Rain. Indiana Rain. And I'm here with Mike Reskowski. Got it. Yeah, that, that, it's a little, a little tough last name, but it's I, like, I had to think a minute. There you go. There you go. So tell me a little bit about your line and how you came about designing it. Well, you know, our, our line basically came off of, uh, you know, we're really into MMA fighting, really into close-knit community, family kind of things. And, you know, we really want to get out there and branch out into the whole MMA world. But really, our clothing line has turned into, you know, it's, it's active wear. So you, basically anybody can, uh, anybody can wear it. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. So who are these other people right here on my left? Okay, this is one of our models right here. And, and what is your name? Amira Cilioni. And And where are you from? I'm from here in Las Vegas. Oh, you grew up here. What yeah. school did you go to? Um, well, I currently start my senior year in high school on Monday at the Las Vegas Academy. You're not even graduated nope. from high school yet? Oh my gosh, and she's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you get into modeling? Um, well, I was approached like everyone else was at the modeling or at the mall, and uh, they said, "Why don't you call and we'll set up a meeting with our agents?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll give it a shot." And um, after I set up the the meeting with the agents, I did my fo first photo shoot, and I was like, "I need to do this. This is this is what I need to do. It was really it's really fun." Like, I found fa the audition for Fashion Week, and I was like. That sounds like something I'd be interested in. So how was it when you did that, that audition? I mean, did you feel real comfortable walking down the runway? Yeah, it, it feels like a second home, almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's an adrenaline rush, almost, when you see all these people taking pictures and you see the cameras at the end of the runway. It's just like, it's crazy. It, well, well, did they give you any tips? Don't stall <laughs> don't trip uh, other than that it's kind of your own like sassiness to the walk and how you step other than that it's just it comes naturally so, so modeling has really changed a lot over the years you know because it used to be you had to do a certain kind of a walk to be a model and and also you had to be a certain height to do runway modeling and I noticed that here we have a lot of different heights and a lot of variety in that which I think is wonderful yeah uh, I'm just at the cusp of high fashion runway modeling, literally 5'8", and you have to be 5'8". So I'm just like, I'll stick my chin up a little extra. <laughs> so. Well, that's good. It's good to talk with you. So now, um, are you a model or are you a fighter? I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. What is your name? Uh, Walt Harris. And Walt Harris, where are you from? I'm from originally from Birmingham, Alabama, but I trained in Florida with Charles at our American Top Team. Oh, so you guys work together. That's great. That's great. So, so tell us a little bit about being here for Fashion Week in Las Vegas. Oh, it's awesome. I, um, I honestly didn't know what to expect right away, but, uh, you know, I love fashion, you know, things like that. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's really been a cool experience. You know, I got to meet a lot of cool people, do a bunch of fun stuff. So, you know, a little bit out of my element, but, you know, I enjoyed it. I heard you say that you were a little, you felt a little uncomfortable being on the run, runway because that's not usually where you're at. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot like fighting. You know, like she said, she spoke on the adrenaline rush. Like, I felt like I was getting ready for a fight. You know, like they're about to announce me to walk out. You know, it was, it was fun. But, you know, after the first run, I, I kind of settled down and I enjoyed it. You know, I really did. Well, well, now tell me about this shirt that you're wearing. It says Death Squad. And how does it feel? Oh, incredible. Like, um... To be honest, I've had a, a lot of designers try to make me fight wear, you know, and different things for fighting. And it's always either not made right, doesn't fit me right, or it just doesn't look, you know, quality. And I feel what I'm wearing represents who I am. And this this is just, it fits my 
my idea perfect of what I want to present, you know, what I want to represent. So I love it. Is this a signature shirt for no, you? No. Not my signature. Home. Okay, so so nobody's wearing their signature shirts. Not, I take not, it. Not today. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't ask it anymore. <laughs> they're, they're working on my uh, my signature shirt for. I'm fighting October 12th, so they're putting me together a shirt right now. Okay, you're gonna send me a picture of it when of you get course. it. Okay. Actually, I'll send you one. <laughs> okay, I want one. <laughs> so so I didn't ask you, but I noticed this looks very comfortable too. It is so soft. <laughs> like on the inside, I've never felt a let sweater soft. Let me feel, let me feel. Oh, that is definitely, oh, that's really soft. And it's crazy warm. Like I'm a little bit warm right here. Like <laughs> it's cold in the room, but the sweater is making me sweat a little bit. <laughs> well, well, you know how it is when you get a really comfortable shirt. You know, you always wear it to bed, that's you know? Right, that's right. <laughs> like, you know, you get these comfortable clothes and then you're wearing them in bed. So um, tell me a little bit about you being here at Fashion Week Las Vegas. How important is it to you to be here? You know what, it's super important because, you know, we started off doing, uh, doing a lot of uh, fights and I really wanted to break into the international national market. Uh, you know, the best way to do that is obviously the runway. You know, we want to show off what we have, show people, you know, wh you know what, we, what we do. We've, had, we've actually had a huge response out here. Um, you know, everyone just loves the shirts, loves, you know, what we're, what we're putting on. Um, so, you know, we're super excited. Well, good. It's so good to have you here today, and thank you for being on Sandy Castell and Friends. Driving south on Highway 65 The rain was beating down Roads were slick as ice Tears were burning down Her cheeks as she cried Her heart still breaking From their terrible fight When she packed her bags And grabbed her guitar She threw all she owned In the back of her car She slid behind the wheel Put the pedal to the floor And shouted
Hello, everyone. I'm Aaron Phillips. And I'm Ricky Cash, and it's been our pleasure to appear with the Sandy Castell and Friends Show as we unwrap the legends of Las Vegas. You know, this week, our subject, Siegfried and Roy. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Sorry, Cash, <laughs> no bears, but you're certainly right about the lions and tigers. That's for sure, Phillips. The Siegfried and Roy Show ran its course from 1990 to 2003, and it was the most visited show in Las Vegas. Wow, you're right, Cash, and I believe it would still be running today if it wasn't for the terrible accident that almost cost Roy his life. I sure know about that. On October 3rd, 2003, Roy was bitten on the neck by one of his favorite tigers, Montecure. What happened, Cash, there was a malfunction in the lighting, and Montecore, who did the exact routine for every show, got disoriented. So when Montecore bit Roy's neck, he thought Roy was being attacked, and he tried to get him to safety? Wow, here's a hidden treasure about that story. While Roy was being rushed to the trauma center UMC in critical condition, possibly bleeding out, he told Siegfried to make sure that nothing would happen to the animal. Wow, and it didn't. Monte Montecure lived to be 17 years old. Roy did ultimately recover, and together he and Siegfried did one final show in 2010, which was nationally aired on ABC. You know, on the side note, Cash, Siegfried and Roy was the very first show that Robin and I went to when we first came to Las Vegas in 1996. How ironic is that? Well, folks, that's it for today as we unwrap another legend on the Las Vegas landscape. I'm very excited. You know why? Why? Because it gives me a chance to go to Smith's or Sahara and Durango. They got the best of everything. Sandy, you know what they have over there? What? The best food, the best produce, the best meats. I love that place, and I can't wait to go. I know. We love shopping at Smith's. I'm going right now. You know, I want everybody to know in TV land, all the guests that we have are here. They're behind the camera. And in a few minutes, we're going to be sitting around the table, and we're going to introduce everybody again and have a great time. And we're excited. Go ahead. Yes, Sam. Okay. Get your pepper. So here we go with a little pepper. That's right. Look how she handles that. Look at the wrist action, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but I'm trying to do wrist. it left-handed, and I'm right-handed. Oh, okay. So Let me get on this side here. for me. <laughs> that looks fantastic. <laughs> And then? Uh, no salt. No salt. Okay, now what I want you to do is uh, no, get your garlic. parsley. Yeah, garlic, that's the key. Garlic, okay. Yeah, don't be afraid with that, and just have a good time with it. And, and again, ladies and gentlemen, if I may say with, with a humble heart, every spice that I've used so far is salt, pepper, garlic powder, parsley. That's it. And every dish that I have made, and we all have that in our households. And the, the end piece is the cheese. Parsley? The cheese. Cheese. Cheese and the parsley goes on top, and you can be very generous with that if you like. That looks absolutely terrific. I'm making it, but he's coaching me. Well, yeah, she's doing a great job. <laughs> That's the way it is. I think it looks terrific. It looks fabulous. I love it. That looks great. And that's uh, Pecca Romano cheese. Just so you know, you got Loca Deli cheese, you got Pecca Romano, you got Romano. You know, you got a lot of cheeses that are out there. And the better the quality of the cheese, the better the the food that tastes, trust me. So you can use any kind of cheese? Any kind of cheese, it, it, it's your preference. I mean, right. Peck Romano, it's, you know, it's imported, so it's a little expensive, but it's it's delicious. Is this and enough? That's fantastic, okay. Sandy. And naturally, uh, the parsley, and don't parsley. be afraid. And then, if you glance over to that uh, beautiful oven that you have in your beautiful home, just pop it in that oven. Okay. Because our guests are really hungry, and they're giving me the eye. Let's eat. <laughs> And that goes right in there for about uh, 15 minutes. Okay, it will be taken out. It comes out nice and toasty. And the reason, now many times, Sandy, people use uh, butter. I know, I use it. They use butter, yeah. which is okay, but the thing with butter is, which is, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. The thing with butter is, is that it makes the bread soggy. When you go with the olive oil, it makes the bread crispy. Mm. That's the difference. But you could use butter, again, doesn't make any difference. Whatever your taste buds say you do, that's exactly what you do. So, Chef Michael, tell us a little bit. I mean, you're obviously preparing all these different dishes here, and it's all going to be served at the same time. Yes. But now, you grew up where? where well, did you I was grow up? born in South Philadelphia. Okay. I was born in a wonderful Italian neighborhood uh, in Philly. Is that on South 12th Street? Or 12th uh and... Pashong Avenue, 12th and Moore right. in Philadelphia. Now, now, in the houses there, they're kind of close together, right? So right all next families to families yes. are all pretty close. You heard your neighbors breathing. So on Sundays, did they all get together and have a big meal? Every household, and it's funny, Sam, I'm glad you said that. In my neighborhood, we were all Italian. 
Every household made the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Meatballs, lasagna, eggplant parmesan. And no matter what home you walk into, believe it or not, every meatball tasted different, every sauce tasted different. It was incredible. It was, it's, it was a time in my life that was just beautiful. Well, that's good. You got the tongs, Sandy? I got the tongs. Okay, <laughs> here we go here. This is fantastic. As you can see, remember that big mound of scuttle, escarole? Look at the size of it now. Kind of, it kind of got down there. And what you do, this is almost done, and you got one more ingredient. And as you can see, the juice, the juices, the fried garlic, look how beautiful. Now remember, I haven't seasoned yet. No. I haven't seasoned yet, because if I would have seasoned by now, trust me, this would have stuck. It wouldn't have been, it would have been a, not a nice sight. Okay. But I also noticed you're using a different kind of pan that has a coating. Well, yeah, yeah, most of the pans today, they have them. Uh, it ain't like chef's pans where they're seasoned. This you don't have to really worry about. Uh, you really can't, you can burn it, but it will not stick. Uh, but I still don't recommend you seasoning until you're done. Now, the scanola's got, it's very tender right now. All right? Now, Sandy, what I would like you to do, if you'd be so kind, is to get the two cans of the cantalina beans. And I'll explain that to everybody. As you can see, this is done. These are cantalina beans. These are the white beans. And remember, this is called scarolan beans. It's called amanesta in Italian. And what you do is you just pour that on top of here. Go ahead, Sam, give it a shot there. I know that there is another talent that you have that um, a lot of us in Las Vegas have enjoyed very much. Would you like to tell the audience a little bit about your talents behind the drums and in front of the drums? Well, all my life I was an entertainer and I performed and it was a great passion to me. The two greatest passions in my life is cooking and performing because I'm a people person and I love people. And it's a great honor and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come into your home. Thank you. And uh, yes. prepare this for the wonderful people. And again, I got to thank Smith Food Team because oh, right. they were absolutely fantastic. And my guests, because each one of my guests are giants in their own way, and it's a blessing to have them at the house so we can eat and have some fun. And this, this is done. This right. goes on the side. This I'm going to push over. Now, the That's nice right. thing about it, our friends, they don't have to pay. They don't get a bill. <laughs> They're happy. You know. I bought a bottle of wine. You can't get her. So and, and dessert. And dessert. So the next right thing there. is, is dishing it all up. Yep. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. So hungry, I can't wait. Hey, Sandy, do you know something? The Tuscany Grill in Henderson, their meatballs are phenomenal. So is their cheesecake. Haha, <laughs> so is their veal parmesan. And their lasagna. And their spaghetti mouillonnaise. Oh, my gosh, everything is great. Let's go. I'm starving. We're going right now. Let's go eat some dinner. I'm so hungry. Here's to Chef Michael. Go away. Go away. Go away. Hey, everybody, do the one to manchada. That needs you to tie Everybody eat. Come on, take it over there. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, get that move. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on Sandy Castell and Friends. We'll see you real soon.